everyone. Um, so the title of my talk may be a little misleading. I'm not going to talk about how to get to space vis-a-vis -vis rockets, but I'm going to talk about how I got into the space industry. Um, it's actually the number one question I get asked from students and peers and random people on the street, pretty much everyone, because um, I have an engineer background and I'm doing space policy at Virgin Galactic and Virgin Orbit at the moment. Um, so it's actually going to be a good case study for the points that Melissa and Alyssa actually already presented on, so pretty good. <laughs> um, so since I was a child, I knew I wanted to go to space. Um, I had decided that I was going to go into the space industry. And there's very few things, well, okay, let me take that back. There's a lot of things that has changed since I was a child, but there's a, a few things that didn't. And one of them was that passion to be in the space industry. Another one was the, the almost obsession of always having a plan. And I think my colleague Cody is in the room and he can tell. <laughs> um, I love having plans and I love knowing how to execute them. <laughs> Um, so when I was a child and I decided this is where I was going to go and this is what I wanted to do, the first thing I set out to do was make a plan. How was I going to get there? To do that, I looked at some of the people I looked up to in industry that were doing things that I wanted to do and started building my plan based on some of their background and some of their experiences. So the first person I looked up to was Jean-Luc Picard. So great leader, um, amazing captain doing a job that I think everybody would love to have, exploring the unknown in the most amazing spaceship enterprise. So looking at his background, he first went to Starfleet Academy, had a little bit of a rough start there, uh, faltered a little bit, but through hard work and perseverance, he uh, worked up the ranks and became captain of the Starship Enterprise. So I looked at that and I was like, how am I gonna follow in Picard's footsteps? And it became pretty obvious pretty quickly that he was a little bit before my time. So um, I went back to the drawing board. That being said, I do drink a cup of tea, Earl Grey, hot, every day, thanks to Picard. <laughs> so the next person I looked to was Neil Armstrong. I'm not going to really go too much into detail um, because I'm sure everyone here has seen First Man. But he went to Purdue, um, studied aerospace engineering, became a pilot in the Navy, a test pilot after that, and then became part of the astronaut corps, and of course became the first man on the moon. So this was a template I could follow. Um, I looked at this, uh, decided that's what I was going to devise my plan on, and basically did it. So then I decided I was going to go to Purdue. I was going to study aerospace engineering. I was, become, I was going to become a fighter pilot, apply to NASA and become an astronaut. Super simple, right? <laughs> I had a plan from A to B, from start to finish, and it was gonna be flawless, everything was gonna go my way. Of course, we all know that <laughs> that usually never happens. Um, but even before that, um, you know, when I decided that this was my plan of action, I was really interested in NASA's mission, actually more so than the fighter pilot part. Um, so I did follow a lot of NASA's mission, the current events, um, and the current astronauts that were part of the core at the time. And it got me um, connected to someone that was, um, you know, uh, became a role model and someone I looked up to in industry. And it was a little bit of a surprise to me, but I got to know Kalpana Chalda. And it's sometimes hard to put into words why I connected with her so much, but I think, I mean, I know it was the first time that I saw someone that had a little bit of my background and looked like me in a position that I would like to see myself in someday. And that kind of connection is hard to describe, but it, it had a little bit of a deeper meaning some, than some of the other role models I looked up to, which up until now, to be blunt, were white men, which there was nothing wrong with that. They all had great achievements, but for the first time I saw someone that uh, was from India that was part of the jobs that I wanted to do in the future. So I delved into her background as well, and she was a private pilot. She uh, studied engineering in India, came to the US, did her master's and her PhD, and uh, got her doctorate in, at UC Boulder. Um, so that was something that I was fascinated about because I really wanted to be a fighter pilot just so that I could be an astronaut. <laughs> um, but this is when I first started realizing I could become a really good engineer, which was I, what I was interested in to be part of the Space Corps. <laughs> so
So I made a few adjustments to my plan, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a private pilot also. <laughs> and I am going to study engineering um, and be really good at it and go to NASA and become an astronaut. So this was my plan now. I was really excited about it. I was living life. I had just started high school. I made the speech team. I was on the mock trial team that was first in state. Um, I got accepted to symphonic orchestra. I was super cool in high school, you guys. It's on top of the world. <laughs> I was getting good grades. Everything was going according to plan. And then, as life does, I got thrown a curveball. So ever since I was in third grade, um, I've worn glasses. And like the big, ugly ones, too. <laughs> that, they were thick. They made your eyes look really big. I, have, I already have big eyes, so it made my eyes look almost googly. But I had, <laughs> I had bad eyesight. And each year, it got consistently worse. And um, in high school was the year when my eyesight got to the point where it didn't meet the requirements for being an astronaut. So that really made my vision blurry, both figuratively and in, in real life. Um, but I didn't know what to do. Um, I didn't really have a backup plan. I was so determined on going to space that I wasn't really thinking about anything else. Um, I did have a weird obsession with sharks, so maybe I was like, maybe I can be a marine biology. Um, but <laughs> um, I was really trying to figure out what to do with my life at that point. So what I did is I did start ground school um, a, a couple years before this and finished ground school, and I started taking my first pilot uh, lessons for private pilot's lessons, license. Um, I, I loved flying. Uh, it gave me a lot of clarity. It was exhilarating, but it did give me some time away from the ground, again, pun intended, um, to really think about what I wanted to do. Um, and during this time, something else happened that changed the course of my plan. Spaceship One won the Anasari X Prize. Amazing feat. Um, I heard about the first time it flew, and the second time it flew, I ironically skipped physics class to go see it. <laughs> um, but I saw Spaceship One fly to space again and win the Ansari X Prize. And it was incredible because it kind of put my plan back on track. There was other opportunities for me to be a part of the space industry and to eventually go to space. I didn't have to go through NASA. There are now private industries and private companies doing what I wanted to do. So this put my plan back on track. I did eventually go to Purdue, got my aerospace engineering degree. I followed in Neil Armstrong's footsteps. Um, while I was at Purdue, I um, did a microgravity flight campaign with NASA through their microgravity office. Um, I did it under a professor, um, uh, Stephen Collicott. It was a great experience. I know some of you in this room may have done it. Amazing, and if you can, I recommend it but I'll get back to this a little later. So then I graduated and I worked on, um, I worked at a company where I worked on structural mods to military aircraft. And while I was there, Professor Collicott called me and asked, how do you feel about moving to DC? Which is not always the first question <laughs> you get asked on a phone call. But he told me about an opportunity with an organization that works with commercial space flight companies. And he said, you should think about pursuing it. I know it's not engineering, but You've always wanted to go into commercial space. This is going to give you a great idea of what the landscape is, who are the players, and w what the companies are doing. So knowing nothing about space policy, I took the leap and applied and got the job at the Commercial Space Flight Federation. It was great three years. I learned so much about policy, the regulatory environment, what it takes to build up such a nascent industry. And I got to know a lot of the players in the commercial space world. And one of the companies that was a member of the Commercial Space Flight Federation was Virgin Galactic. So when I was transitioning out of uh, the Commercial Space Flight Federation, I used my newly acquired lobbying skills to lobby slash apply for a job at Virgin Galactic. And thanks to George Whitesides and my boss right now, Richard Del Bello, who took a chance, I am now at the DC operations of Virgin Galactic and Virgin Orbit um, and the, their entire space portfolio. It is a dream job. I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I'm working for a company that is opening up space to all. We're sending 
more and more humans to space. And as part of this job, I get to work on sending microgravity payloads to space as well. So I'm working with universities and organizations to send their science up to space and back. And it's just absolutely exactly what I want to do. So I'm having a blast. But as you can see, again, my journey was not linear. It took a lot of turns. It took a lot of twists. Um, there were times of panic, but everything worked out in the end. And you know, just to reiterate some of the points that Melissa and Alyssa, I like that, <laughs> Melissa and Alyssa had said, you, know, you never know what will come from seizing opportunities that are out of your wheelhouse or out of your comfort zone. They may lead to even more exciting opportunities in the future. And you, know, you never know what a little hard work, some great timing and some luck will all lead to. Um, so always take new chances. You might find something you like and you might be surprised. You might find that you don't like it, but that's a data point for <laughs> the future. Um, and you'll never know where life will lead you. So thank you very much. <laughs>